Hello, friends. Sleep Tight Stories, Sleep Tight Relax, and Sleep Tight Science are now available to play on Story Button, the device that makes it easy to listen to our shows and more without having to use a phone or tablet. This month, you can save $10 at storybutton.com when you use the code Sleep Tight. Story Button, the home of imagination. Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. Every week, we celebrate our supporters through shout-outs and personal birthday messages. We think this is also a fun way for us to hear all about all the amazing places that you, our listeners, come from. I'd like to say hello to Melody Green. Thank you for the great picture you drew of Bernice. Hello to Ellie and Maya in Danville from Mom and Dad. And hello to Carson from Savage, Minnesota. Happy belated birthday to Ari, who turned six on February 28th. Mom and Dad love you so much and are so proud of you every day. Happy belated birthday to Jacob in French Valley, California, who turned eight on March 3rd and had a trip to Legoland. Sissy, Mom and Dad love you more, more, more. Happy belated birthday to Oliver from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, who turned four on March 12th. Mom, Dad, Ella, June, and Molly are so proud of you and love you so much. Happy belated birthday to Brooks, who turned five on March 13th. You are continuing to be a kind and caring kid. We will love you no matter what. Love Mom, Jay, Loki, and Ivy. Happy belated birthday to Nathan from Ireland, who had a birthday on March 14th. Happy belated birthday to Sienna of Northview Drive, who turned four on March 16th. Your big brother Camilla would like to wish you a very happy birthday. Happy birthday to Orion, who has a birthday on March 18th. Mommy and Daddy love you. You are great. Happy birthday to Reed from Illinois, who is turning eight on March 18th. Mom, Dad, Cora, and Perry love you so much. Happy birthday to Bruno, who is turning five on March 19th. Mommy and Daddy and your dogs, Kara and Loki, are so proud of you and love you so much. And happy birthday to David in Montana, who is turning seven on March 22nd. Mom, Dad, Emery, and Nolan love you tons and tons. Happy birthday to you all. Now, on to our story. Nicole's mother is upset when she sees Nicole coming from the old barn where she asked her not to go. Nicole wants to go back and see those magical things in the chest again. When she gets back to the barn, the cloak, the key, the mirror, and the compass are exactly as she left them. The thing that has caught her attention is the packet of seeds. Nicole and the Box in the Barn, Part 2 Nicole, I told you not to go out to the barn. The barn is in terrible shape, and I'm scared that you will get hurt. And your sneakers? In the past, you would get terribly upset if even a touch of dirt got on them. Now they are stained green, Nicole's mother said as she ushered her into their new old house. I was bored, Mom. There is nothing to do in this boring place with its red mud and endless fields of nothing. I just wanted to explore a bit. And besides, the barn is no more dangerous than this old house. This house doesn't even have Wi-Fi, Nicole said with her arms folded across her chest, her usual combative stance. You kids and Wi-Fi. 
When I was your age, we didn't have all these devices and stuff, her mother replied. And you used to walk to school in bare feet in the middle of winter, right? Nicole interrupted. Nicole's mother sighed. The phone company said they will be here at the first of the week to hook up the internet. And then you can get lost on your phone again. Until then, try to be careful around that old barn. I don't want you stepping on old rusty nails or having the roof fall in on your head. I stopped at the grocery store after I visited Home Hardware. Can you help me unpack the bags and then we can have supper a bit early today? I got a rotisserie chicken and some salad and your favorite cookies for dessert, her mother said as they walked into the kitchen. That night, after having the worst shower of her life because the water pressure kept disappearing and the water was scalding hot, Nicole lay in her bed listening to the creaks and cracks of the house. The wind howled through the cracks in her bedroom window, and it wasn't even windy outside. Laying there, Nicole swore the house was telling her to leave and go back to Montreal. It was just like the scary movies she had watched at her friend's house. They weren't really allowed to watch these movies, and Nicole had had bad dreams for a week. But in every one, the house told the people to leave, and they never did. Nicole would be happy to take the house's advice. Eventually, after repeatedly trying to get a signal on her phone and looking at pictures of her and her friends for half an hour, she finally fell asleep. After breakfast the next day, Nicole was tidying her bedroom and putting things away. Her room was the first her mother had painted, so she hadn't had the chance to put away her stuff or put up any of her pictures on the wall yet. Sorry, but I have to go into town again, Nicole. I should be back in a few hours. Is there anything I can get for you? Her mother said from the bottom of the stairs. Wi-Fi or some friends, maybe? Nicole replied. Nicole could hear her mother sigh. I'll need your help in the kitchen when I get back, please. Try and finish your room while I am gone. Nicole always wondered how her mother remained so positive. I guess old people don't need the internet or friends, she thought. It was supposed to take Nicole all morning to finish her room, but after about an hour, she was done. She had put her clothes away and decorated a bit, but was still waiting for new things to arrive from Ikea before she could put the finishing touches on making this room her own. She went into the kitchen to grab a snack and a drink when she remembered the fancy-looking chest out in the barn. I could sweep the living room floor again or go have another look inside that chest, she thought to herself. After closing the heavy old red barn door, Nicole walked slowly over to the box, across the piles of old hay and dirt, making sure there were no rusty old nails to step on, seemingly her mother's biggest fear. Her sneakers were no longer white, but a mixture of green, red, and brown. Well, so much for these sneakers. Just then, she let out a scream. A mouse had just run in front of her, and she could hear the sounds of more scurrying above her in the loft. I hope you guys stay out here. If I see one of you in my bedroom, I'm running all the way back to Montreal, she yelled towards the loft. Nicole approached the box. Her fingers traced the carvings, feeling the smooth grooves and the warmth of the wood. It was still clean. Unlike the rest of the space, it was free of dust and dirt. The lock clicked open as if recognizing Nicole as its rightful owner. The lid lifted with ease, revealing its contents to her curious eyes. The cloak, the mirror, the key and the compass. 
Everything was as she had left it the day before, but it was the seeds that she was most interested in. In Montreal, she and her mother had had a small garden in their backyard. It was kind of fun, and even her friends would come over and pick the berries that they grew there. Maybe she could have one here, too. Nicole liked gardening, almost as much as she loved painting. The seed packet looked really old, like something from a movie. The paper was soft and kind of brown, and it felt like it would tear if you weren't super careful with it. So she was. The bottom part of the package was sort of see-through, and the seeds inside were shiny. Must be magic seeds like the beans Jack had. Maybe if I plant them, I will grow a beanstalk to a kingdom up in the sky, Nicole laughed. She was only half joking with herself. She had such an imagination that she kind of believed anything could happen. There were fancy letters on the package, but they were hard to see because they were so faded, like they had been there for a hundred million years. But what she could read looked pretty interesting. Candy plants, it read. That sounds more interesting than carrots or the local favorite, potatoes. Nicole carefully tucked the package of seeds into her pocket and walked out of the barn, making sure to close and latch the door tight behind her. She started to walk around the farm, looking for the perfect spot to plant her new garden. She wanted to find a place that was just right for her special seeds. Wouldn't it be funny if these were really magic seeds and a garden full of candy and chocolate grew? She laughed. My friends back home would probably fly down to see. Nicole didn't have much of a sweet tooth, but she liked the idea of picking chocolate off a bush. As she wandered, she saw many spots, but none of them felt perfect. Then, far away, she noticed a piece of land that looked really messy. It was covered with thorns and weeds, and it didn't look like a nice place for a garden at all. Around the edges, there were a few old trees and a fence made of wood that looked like it had seen better days. But something about it seemed interesting to Nicole. As she walked closer to the messy spot, something strange happened. It started to get foggy, but only around that piece of land. Nicole thought it was weird because the rest of the farm was clear and sunny. The fog made the place look mysterious, like it was hiding a secret. When Nicole finally got to the spot, she was surprised. Even though it looked all messy and full of weeds from far away, up close, it was different. It seemed as though the fog had swept away all the thorns and most of the weeds, leaving behind a soft, welcoming red earth. A few patches of berry bushes and wildflowers that were dotted around showed that the land was eager to grow something. It looked like it was waiting for her, ready for her to plant her magic seeds. Just then, she heard her mother's car come up the long driveway. Oh, she's back already, Nicole thought. She hadn't even started her garden. Quickly, she tucked the packet safely into her pocket and went to meet her mother. Nicole, you won't believe how busy the stores were, her mother said as she entered the house, juggling canvas bags full of groceries and other things. Nicole, smiling for the first time since they left home, couldn't wait to share her discovery. Mom, I found the most perfect place for a garden, just like in Montreal. She led her to the window and pointed out towards her special spot. I'm going to make a magical candy garden there. Her mother leaned over the sink to look out the window, her eyes scanning the unkept area Nicole was pointing at. That place? 
It looks a bit, uh, wild, honey. Are you sure? It might take a lot of work to clear the weeds. But it's different up close. It's perfect, really. And I'm going to plant magic seeds, Nicole insisted, her imagination already painting the barren plot with vibrant candy plants. Smiling at her daughter's excitement, her mother nodded. Okay, my imaginative gardener. I can't wait to see this magical candy garden of yours. What makes these seeds magical, though? They're going to grow into candy plants, Nicole replied with a smile. <laughs> you have always had the best imagination. Magic seeds for a magical garden, then. I look forward to seeing it bloom, her mother said, kissing the top of Nicole's head before going back to her chores. The next morning, Nicole was up at the crack of dawn. She dressed quickly, ate her toast and peanut butter as fast as she could, and rushed outside, her packet of magic seeds in her hand. As she raced to the plot, the mysterious fog formed again, transforming the wildness of the area into a garden ready to be planted. Okay, magic seeds, let's make something beautiful, Nicole whispered to herself as she began preparing the small patch of land with some old rusty tools she found in the barn. She talked to the seeds as if they could hear her, promising them love and care. As she worked, the world seemed to fade away, leaving Nicole in her own bubble of fun. She hadn't even thought of Wi-Fi or taken out her phone once. She planted each seed with care, imagining the candy plants they would become. Grow strong and sweet, she encouraged them. With the last seed tucked into the earth, Nicole stood back, hands on her hips, surveying her work. The garden was still just a plot of red dirt, trimmed with berry bushes and flowers, but she was happy with her progress. I'll take good care of you, she promised the garden. Nicole, with dirt still clinging to her hands and a smile on her face, made her way back to the house as her mother called out, Lunch is ready, Nicole. I made something special today. Her stomach immediately started making gurgling noises. She was hungry. As she entered the kitchen, her mother noticed her smile and the red dirt covering her clothes. Looks like someone's been hard at work. How's the magical garden coming along? Nicole beamed. I planted all the magic seeds. I can't wait to see them grow into candy plants. Imagine walking up to a garden full of sweets. Her mother laughed, handing her a curry bowl. That would be quite the sight. What do you think will grow first? I hope it's the chocolate flowers, Nicole said, taking a spoonful of her lunch. Or maybe the gummy bear bushes. They both laughed at the thought. Wouldn't that be fun, her mother said. After lunch, Nicole looked outside towards the garden. Do you think the seeds will grow quickly, Mom? They are magic seeds, after all. I would not be surprised if they did. Nicole went to bed that night with the sounds of the house and visions of her magical garden sprouting in her dreams. As the house settled into silence, a gentle breeze blew through the garden. Could the magic seeds under the cover of the night sky begin their transformation into the magical candy garden Nicole dreamed of? And that is the end of this part. Good night. Sleep tight.